Tonight on Space Cadets, we attempt to launch Paul, Billy, Kerry and actor Charlie into space in this shuttle. Welcome to Space Cadets. It's a nice night for a shuttle launch, I think you'll agree. Yep, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. MC Hammer had his hammer time. Chico sadly had his Chico time. Well, let me tell you, this is shuttle time. The moment when all systems are go and we attempt to launch four space cadets into orbit. These intrepid pioneers of non-interplanetary travel are Billy, a recruitment consultant. Kerry, a college administrator. Paul, a plasterer. And an undercover actor named Charlie who is perhaps using Earth's worst ever cover story by masquerading as a poet. All the graduates of the fictional space facility STAR, the Space Tourism Agency of Russia, and they've all undergone an intensive three-week training course. Now, this evening, they will be boarding Earth Orbiter 1 and doing what one tends to do in an orbiter, orbit. But will they rumble the ruse? Put yourselves in their shoes. After all they've been through, it would actually be weird for them to question the whole thing. But back to the launch. Over the last three weeks, their expectations of space travel have been altered. Not just by chucking Newton's universal law of gravitation out the classroom window, but by telling them such things as, you only need to train for three weeks to go into space, or they won't be taking off vertically, and there'll be gravity machines on board keeping them stuck to the floor. Crucial to the success of the mission will be the performance of the shuttle simulator, Earth Orbiter 1, the construction of which, I can assure you, has been quite a performance in itself. Welcome to the special effects world of Brick Price, where imagination and technology come together to create amazing things. Rick Price, one of Hollywood's top special effects directors, has been given the job of building a space shuttle interior capable of convincing our space cadets they're blasting into space. He has a set that has been used in the film Space Cowboys and Apollo 13. But how is he going to make it move around and feel like a real shuttle? Together with his team of engineers and hydraulics experts, they come up with the idea of placing huge airbags on each corner of the shuttle's base. The airbags are considerably bigger of necessity on this. They, have to, they, they came from a um, Greyhound bus type of a thing. But right now, without the shocks, if you start to rock it a little okay. bit, it just oscillates. Okay. When compressed air is forced into the airbags, they'll expand, causing the entire 42-foot shuttle to move around. By adjusting the pressure of the air, the movement can be gentle like the swaying of a boat on water. Or intense, similar to severe turbulence on a passenger aircraft. <laughs> After only a, about a half an hour, I find that I, I need to get my land legs back. So it moves realistically enough during normal flight. But how can they make the cadets feel like they're experiencing the launch they're expecting? Remember, we've told them the shuttle will take off like a conventional aircraft and gently corkscrew into space. On the launch, we have a hydraulic ram which lifts up the cockpit area because the only time that that you're going to feel that acceleration is when you first take off. <laughs> wow. Part of the job is to trick the cadet's senses. The hydraulics on the front of the craft will push them back into their seats, mimicking G-force, and hopefully make them feel they're accelerating away from the Earth. It gives you that sense of acceleration because you're pushed into the seat back, and uh, when you couple that with movement, it is terrifying. So it looks real and feels real, but one vital piece of the puzzle still remains to be completed. It needs to sound real. And something very important is the sound of the, the launch, of the noises that are running when you're going through space. It has to be believable, it has to be believable for a long period of time. So I wanted to get the best person I could, and that would be Dean Andre. Enter Hollywood's legendary sound designer, Dean Andre. I'm the guy who puts the squeak in the doors and the squeaks in the floors. Oh, that's great. This is one of my favorite sounds on the entire planet. Let's see if we can use it. That'd be a gas, huh? Yeah. 
We're bringing in some new technology, sound technology called ambient sound. We're able to move sound up and down and right over the top of a person's head. So we'll be able to accomplish this right inside the space shuttle. It's the very first time anyone's had it. Steven Spielberg doesn't have it, James Cameron. No one has it, but we have it right here. The 20 channels of sound are pumped through 40 speakers hidden within the walls and ceilings of the shuttle. This is the equivalent of taking a nightclub sound system and putting it in your bathroom at home. I thought, well, we have to think to the shuttle launch what that actually sounded like, and there are samples in there from an actual shuttle. We also have F-14 fighter uh, engines in there. We have a combination of probably 15 to 20 different aircraft in there, plus explosions from a howitzer, a World War II howitzer, that <laughs> ignites the actual boosters as the shuttle is taking off. For the launch, Dean creates a sound that will physically vibrate throughout the shuttle and hopefully help convince our cadets that they are moving. He's going down the runway, and then when the, when the, uh, the main rockets kick in, the main rockets kick in right about over here, and we're taking off, we're taking off, and the rockets kick in, and boom. And now the, the simulator is right to go up like this. But what will our cadets be hearing throughout their days in space? I don't know if many people know this, but space sounds like absolutely nothing. Because of the fact there is no atmosphere, sound cannot travel through nothing. It needs atmosphere. So because of the Hollywood factor, we need to uh, fool these people into believing that they're really someplace that they're not. And we've added ambience to the ship. We've added a little bit of fan noise, a little bit of uh, rocket noise, a little bit of subsonic noise that kind of e e envelops the people in a lower feeling uh, sound that way. And that's what we've done. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> the cadets' orbit around the Earth will not always be smooth space sailing they'll encounter various events along the way. It's Dean's job to make sure that every event has a realistic sound to match. One of the segments in this particular program is to create a meteor shower. So I'm thinking, how would we make the sound of a meteor shower to hit hitting a space shuttle? Dog food <laughs> and cat food. I'm putting a mic inside the van here. Here we go. My neighbors think that I'm crazy. <laughs> I can't wait to put this together. Let's go back in the studio. We have to process this one. All we need is about half a second. Okay, so we're gonna learn that. And it sounds like little bits and pieces of meteor are clunking against the shell of the hull. So everything is set. Because none of our cadets have prior experience of spaceflight, they've nothing to compare the experience with. If it feels and sounds realistic, then hopefully they'll believe they're actually heading for space and orbiting the Earth. With everything in place, it's time for our boffins to strap themselves in and test the simulator. T minus two and counting. We need to get on board. Yeah, roger that. Help your dad in, will you? I gotta tell you something, this adds a whole new sense of reality just having these headphones on. With the jack stands removed, we can uh, proceed to test. We're good to go. Roger that. Up to 10 degrees on the hydraulics and drop a little bit. Actually feeling like you're taking off. Ah, this is impressive. What do you want to go for? Rock and roll motion or uh, four and a half? Shake it up when it's in its right position. Roger that. It's impressed the experts. All it has to do now is convince the cadets. <laughs> How you like that? Dean Andre. Crazy hair, crazy guy. Uh, <laughs> we're going to take a quick break now, after which uh, time the cadets go on an epic journey around the base and once more get close to the truth. How do you like that? Oh, this is, this is movie stuff. Look at the guy looking the boy. Yeah. Proper, like, sort of... Uh, I'm not... Indiana Jones sort of character. Professor. Yeah. So the countdown is well underway. Oh, my gosh. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's beautiful. beautiful. Absolutely awesome, I thought. Welcome back to Space Cadets. It's the big one. It's launch night, and the countdown clock is ticking. Oh, not that one. Grow up. Such an old gag. 
Yesterday, our four space cadets, Billy, Paul, Kerry and our plant Charlie, an actor, got the nod from Mission Commander and they were told they would become Britain's first ever televised space tourist. Now, were it true, this would naturally arouse the interest of the press and as it was crucial to convince our cosmonauts that everything appears true, a press conference was called. Again, imagine it's you in there and ask yourself the question, why wouldn't you believe it? We can join that press conference now, but we'll need to wear one of these. Go. So, you've been chosen as the world's first televised space tourist. You've been told the world's press have flown to Russia to meet you, wearing face masks to protect you from illness. We know they're a bunch of actors and members of the production team, and that there are no films in the cameras. But if you were a space cadet, why wouldn't you believe the illusion was real? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the press. My name's James Campbell. I'm the mission commander here at Star. It's my great pleasure to introduce you to Britain's first space tourists. Charlie Skelton, Paul French, <laughs> Kerry Hassett, and Billy Jackson. Also, I'd like to introduce you to our pilots. Mr. Yevgeny Ivanovich there is the flight commander, and his co-pilot is Mr. Drew Dawson. And we're ready to go. Question number one, please. Sabine Weiss, Deloitte, how did you feel when you were told you were going to space? Um, I, I think uh, we, we were all pretty shocked. I mean, yeah. from, for myself, I mean, uh, we sort of had it in our minds that it was going to be two guys and two girls, mm -hmm. and um, it was just, just surreal. So, yeah. For me, it was, um, it was just, I was so happy. Um, I didn't know what to do, but I was in two, two minds of being too ecstatic and, and making my friends feel a bit funny, but, but I felt happy, yeah. I'm completely shocked. I still can't believe that I've been chosen and I'm the only girl as well. It's, it's really surreal. I suspect that it's uh, a clerical error. <laughs> it's me being here, but I don't, what, I, what I don't want you to do, James, is go back and check your, check your notes. But, no, I'm very, very excited to be here. It's not a clerical error. <laughs> How have you coped with the training? Um, I, I think, in general, um, all of us have coped. It was hard. Um, it's not as easy, I don't know what you've seen, but um, there were some hard times and we had to be dedicated to it. So, but I'm happy to say that all of us, <coughs> in our own way, gave 100% in Val. Um, it is a strong man, but he has, he's wise, very wise, and he's taught us a lot in the, in the weeks that we've been here, so thanks to him. Yeah, thanks, Val. Are any of you planning to have sex in space? <laughs> Well, I can't, I can't answer that one. Um, <laughs> uh, no. Myself, no. Being the no. only girl, no, definitely not. Oh, that in. <laughs> what do you think of Star's training program? We're all just normal people, so Star's program has sort of helped us to come in here, get a knowledge of space and how things work, the mission itself, and you know, it's made us even more enthusiastic uh, about going into space. So, if, in that case, I think Star's program is going to be it's going to be massive. Mm. Have any of you ever slept with a hooker or are members of the EastEnders cast? <laughs> or would you be prepared to in the future? Well, Guys, do you want to go ahead? I wouldn't rule out a member of the EastEnders cast, but I haven't had that. I don't think my girlfriend would like it very much, but, um, no. No, he wasn't a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd quite like to meet Russ Kemp, so maybe. <laughs> um, Charlie, uh, did you know that Christmas in Space is actually our third favourite uh, for Christmas number one back home? In Britain, is there any plans for the four of you to release it uh, when you get back to Earth? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It definitely is now. <laughs> yeah. Kerry does the harmonies. I, yeah, I do the harmonies, yes. That's right. <laughs> Can, could I ask who is performing it? We Sorry, are. you said no, I do have to ask that one. Yeah. Question. You, oh. Who do you think's performing it? You now? are. We Charlie are Charlie. Skelton. Okay, Obviously. that's enough. France du soir. Neil Armstrong said one small step for men, one giant for mankind. What do you plan to say? <laughs> one small step for reality TV, one giant leap for a Bristol boy. That was going to be mine. Charlie? I'll probably keep mine to a short, pithy expletive. I really, I really, I really don't know. So I'll, I'll just think I'll, I'll roll off my tongue when I'm up there. I, 
I can't even begin to think what I'm going to say, because it'll probably come out wrong anyway. OK, everyone, thank you very much for coming. We've laid on a little hospitality for you guys tonight. I hope you enjoy that. I'm going to get my troops back. They've got quite a busy evening ahead of them. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to having you aboard, okay? <laughs> so, the chosen four have had their first taste of fame. What about the other seven cadets, the ones that didn't make the cut? Well, don't worry, they're safe, they're secure, they remain on base, and they're being well looked after. Remember, each of them is already five grand richer and they'll all be t really taken to real Russia and trained as real cosmonauts for a zero-gravity flight. But they are not yesterday's people yet, because they might yet be tomorrow's people. That's right. If tonight's launch uh, goes wrong and we have what NASA rather technically call a total inability to start up or tits-up situation, then we'll go through the whole process again with four more cadets. But for now, it's all about Billy... Kerry, Paul and Charlie. They are the mission commander's special boys and girl and it's why the mission commander took them and only them on a late night visit to mission control in an illusion David Copperfield would be proud of. It's 11pm and mission commander James arrives to take the chosen four cadets on a trip to visit their mission control with a surprise stop off on the way. Are you wrapped up warm? A major problem in creating the whole illusion is that on launch, the cadets won't actually see their shuttle. So we came up with the next best thing. In reality, Earth Orbiter 1 is a wooden nose cone, courtesy of the art department, which 24 hours earlier looked like this. But with a bit of smoke and some creative lighting, it looks as good as the real thing. Okay, guys, this is my favorite bit. Before we reach our final destination, I've got a very special surprise for you. You are about to be the first ever non-star employees to see Earth Orbiter 1 in the flesh. We can't stop very long because they're busy, but I've arranged for the doors to be left slightly open so that you can have a quick look inside. Oh, man, this is crazy. OK, if you'd like to just come here and have a look at it out the window. Oh, oh my God! Shit. There she is! Earth Orbiter 1. Oh, oh, my God! Oh, my <laughs> gosh! Look at her! Look at her! It's, you just look, you can see the liquid see oxygen and hydrogen that Dr. Oates talked about being loaded into the fuel cells. Look, I'm a doctor, look, he's a doctor, look, he's a doctor. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look, God, and everything. Oh. Our new home. We're not stopping here long this, this because they're working film. on it. And, uh, it's a flat for a week. This is like out of a film, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, this is, this is movie stuff. Look at the guy looking in the white coat. Yeah. I could, like, sort of... Yeah. Not, can get a general sort of character. Professor. Yeah. So the countdown is well underway. Oh, my gosh. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? We've got to get on to our final destination. Right. Places to go. Yeah. Things to see. You right, you right? Look at that, that is nice. Oh my great. To see it, it's real now. Yeah. Oh it's all God. real now. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Oh, do you know how lucky we are, guys? We are so Out lucky. of this Levin, man, we are so lucky. Oh, <laughs> damn, man. <laughs> this is like a movie. This is like a live movie. They don't make films of us. <laughs> 
Who are they, though? What? It's preposterous. You might make films of us. A film you, of this? You want to play yourself, though, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, oh, you're right. Okay. I, I want to play. Billy. I wouldn't have anyone else. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll play. play I'll, <laughs> you can play Charlie. Oh yeah. <laughs> Finally, the cadets arrive at Mission Control, an actual disused American control centre we filled with Russian props and brought back to life. If you'd like to follow me... Come in here. This is Sir Guy Boschoff's private viewing gallery. And this is Mission Control. Uh, basically, Fido, Dido, Lido, Nakas is over there, guy with the bald head, and this chap is your mummy. All the information basically is pulled up there, and experts in whatever field who want it can grab it, um, cross reference it with each other. Uh, let me just go and grab your Capcom and say hello. Hollywood sound designer Dean Andre Dean. has donned a white coat to play the part Can of the I controller. Come and meet my troops. I'll be back in a second, guys. Okay. This is Dean, our chief Capcom. Hey, there, buddy. Billy. Billy. Oh, DJ. pleasure to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, sir. Hi. Nice well, oh, pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Carrie. Hey, Carrie. How are you? <laughs> Charlie. Charlie, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Oh, God, I've heard all about this, you guys. It's great. It's great. It's a little cold in here. We keep it cold because we want to make sure that everyone stays awake. <laughs> we drink a lot of coffee, a lot of tea, but uh, you know, it's, it's, we've been practicing this for forever. We're waiting for, for the day it's coming. We're really Everybody, excited. We're really excited. Really excited. Yeah, we're really um, excited. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Amazing, can't wait. Congratulations. I'm looking forward to seeing you up there. It's going to be great. Oh, well, I, I, I need to get back to work. Sure, of course. Okay? Absolutely. Nice to meet you, Dave. Hey, we'll see you guys later. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see you on the, on the, the, the far end when you guys come back. Okay, <laughs> okay see you later. See you later. Okay, let's head back to the coach. Having seen their shuttle and met their mission control, the cadets head back to barracks with nothing to suggest that what they've witnessed isn't real. We're going to be astronauts, man. I can't wait to strap to that rocket. It's I'm like it's T minus three, <laughs> T minus two, T minus one. That is it, we're Oski. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, it's nice to see sound expert Dean popping up again as the emission controller. <laughs> How do you like that? Uh, but hold on. What about that nose cone and mission control? I've seen and I believe. After their little jaunt around the base, the cadets return to the barracks. Yeah. yeah. Was it massive? It is. It was something like out of a movie. The door is open. All this steam. You went in and it. all this steam was... <sighs> it was like out of a film. And all these guards are running, there were dogs and all that. We were the first four people to see it, civilians, to see it ever. When you just saw it, it was there, this big front of a rocket, but all this steam's all coming up from it. Why is there steam? I don't know. And there's, and there's all these workers and this guy, like, all in his silver boiler suit, and I'm like, going, whoa, God. And then the security all around it with, like, dogs. Oh, my God. Things are just getting more and more real now. You know, like, in Apollo 13, when the doors open, and the smoke comes out, and you see the rocket for the first time, it was like that. It was fucking... Or, yeah, it's just... Yeah, we saw the nose of the ship. And the nose in the window it sort of thing. Massive. It's fucking huge, dude. And then all of a sudden, like, it was like... Like an actor, I just thought, right, this would be my cue, my cue. A doctor or a professor walks across with his, like, coat on and a, and a clipboard, looking up and down and looking... And then this, uh, another man followed him in an all-in-white suit with a mask. It was just out of this world. That's what, it all, that's what it's all about. It was unbelievable. This doctor come out and he got long... Capcom. Capcom. Dean. Capcom. His name's yeah. Dean. Dean come out. Yeah, hi guys, yeah. hi guys, it's Mary. Well, I do that with Eddie and Sir, like that. And, was, and he was so like, friendly, he was so, he was so nice, like, like, you know. He said, No, nah, Mary, hey America. guys, okay, yeah. I'm really busy, so I gotta go, and but. I thought, that's wicked. He's like busy, you don't want to bother with us, you know what I mean? And all the rest of them, they were all, not being funny, they were all boffins, you can tell. The square eyes, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This time tomorrow, I might be in space. <laughs> Job done. When you're going to space and you've seen the shuttle, it's easier to believe it than not. <sighs> Once more, the cadets kind of accidentally guessing the whole thing without realising it, but the special effects department 
just still getting away with it. After the break, it's time for the journey to space to begin and for us to truly say, may the fast be with you. Don't go away. Okay. Till Friday. We came, guys. I see you. See you later, guys. We can't touch. We can't touch. See you later. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Oh, welcome back to Space Cadets. Things are now getting very, very serious, and everyone's getting pre launch nerves. Good Lord! Even the mission commander's moustache is looking tense. OK, with the launch time approaching fast, it's time for the cadets to make the final preparations and get into their spacesuits. Very tense time now. Oh OK. This is it. You OK? <laughs> Let's get around. Ooh, there are they? Calvin's. Have you ever seen such a cool man all your life? Top gun. <laughs> Top bum. <laughs> That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Go on to space, baby. Turn my thing up. Your flies are under. Turn them up. Oh, we should have a group space hug. Brother. Group space hug. Yeah, now put your arms on the shoulders, please. You three to me are nice people. You're nice people. <laughs> yeah, all of you guys are. Yeah, yeah. All dressed up and ready for space. The cadets bid farewell to their comrades. Love you all. I got itchy ear. Yeah, my head's itching. You got itchy ear? Built here. Go on. Ah, oh, Charlie boy. Can they see bloody heavy? On the right. Paul. On the left, Charlie. Thanks. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Put the oxygen pack. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. They've got their space suits on, they're ready to party. But they've all got a serious case of space butterflies, and it's time for them to board the bus and make their way to the shuttle and actually get on it. Now, this is a very risky part of the enterprise, and even the slightest mistake could ground everything before they even have the chance to blast off. <laughs> This is it. Have a few nice deep breaths. You've come quite a long way and you're going quite a lot further. Thank you. Добро пожаловать. Welcome. Thank you. Добро пожаловать. Welcome. Привет. 
Come on, Charlie. Yeah, that's good then, yeah. Bye! Bye! Bye. Thank you! Woo! Thank you! Woohoo! Come on! This is it. Wait, this is what we. We earned this. We earned this. Right, guys, man. Come on, let's enjoy love it. it. Just love it. Tell me. Let the wheels sweep you up your, your feet. I'm to finally get the chance to play. Oh, Tell oh me. my gosh, this is the quality. How important do you feel right now? This is it. Woohoo! Oh my god. General purpose computer power is on. I'm safing those. Oh, that's not a good smell. You gotta be an astronaut! They've only burnt our first dinner. First time in space they've burnt our dinner, Charlie. Let's get a bit concerned about the smell. General purpose computer backup switches are set to normal and on. Copy. I am firming that. First four British astronauts in space. Split is this. Wait here, please. Okay. What is this? Wait here, please. Привет. Принимай туристов. Давай. Запускаем по одному. One at the time. Следующий. Next. One at the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've come out the wrong way, haven't I? Sorry. Yeah. I don't care. Well, that's a bit of difference. <laughs> Thank you. Play on TV. Thanks. Here, please. So that, so that, this, this, here. Over. It's all good, Capcom. What do we got here? Proceeding with the initial inventory check all in place. Привет, ребятки. Who's that behind me there? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Control, I'm just going to greet our cosmonaut. Hey, Paul. Hey, how you doing, hey? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? You guys looking good? Yeah, good. Feeling you look good? good? Cool. Yeah, everything okay? Lab. Yeah, we're just, uh, Running through some of the pre-flight. Uh, we're all fueled up. Checking out the uh, Everything's pretty much ready to go. We'll just be finishing our pre-flight. Uh, taxiing out. Taking off. Ready? One, two, three, EO one. <laughs> Love you lot. Good luck. Yeah. Hold on, guys. Space. Here we come. Well, I've got to tell you, that was a very tense time for all the people who've been working on this, because just as Kerry slid in there, she nudged the curtain with her foot. And if that curtain had just moved, she just found herself essentially in a big warehouse. And the whole thing would have been blown, just with a foot. <sighs> anyway, that's it. They're on, strapped in, ready for takeoff. After the break, our cadets are going to actually get launched into what they think is space. And let's just stop here and have a think about this. We've been applauding all the special effects and the set, and we've managed to create an illusion good enough for these people to hopefully believe they're going into orbit. But that's the thing. These three ordinary members of the public believe they're actually going up in a rocket full of rocket fuel. Now, you think about that, actually blasting into space. It's not like catching a train to Kettering. It's going into space. The fact is, these three guys have got cojones. So, uh, balls. So, yes, salute the wizardry of our techies, but come on. These guys are something else. You've got to feel slightly proud of them, right, gang? That's by the by. First, we've got to keep the illusion up and get them into pretend space. Can we pull it off? Well, we are going to find out right after the break. Don't go away. <laughs> Well,
Welcome back. This is it. The time we've all been waiting for. The brave British space tourist, Billy, Kerry, Paul and Charlie, to a lesser extent, because he's an actor and he's got a lame cover story about being a poet. But anyway, they're about to blast off into space. You are T minus 90 seconds. Oh, my God. Good luck, everyone. Good, Good luck. luck, everyone. Good luck. Well done for getting here. Good luck, Good luck you've getting. Come on. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. All Good right. <laughs> Clear. Okay. Right, orbit one, you are go for engine start. I do that. Here we go. Here we go. Yay! Yay. Well done, guys. Well done. Yeah. Ten, nine, Ready? eight, <laughs> seven. Six, five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, oh God, we zero. Space, right over the one, Captain Crimps. Confirm startup. Oh. Engine shot is on. Over. Commander has confirmed startup. Engine shutters on. It was all going so well, and then... Capcom Crimps, we have power loss. Main engine power loss. I don't really Capcom Crimps. Reading on the NH3 control with PRI really? GPC. Is that correct? Capcom Crimps, Copy this that. is Earth Orbiter 1. Do you read me? Over. Reading you. Like you. Bank to turn left into <laughs> taxiway 4 on my mark. Two, uh, negative one, Capcom Crimps. Negative mark. Capcom Uh, we will be waiting here for uh, just a couple of minutes. There's uh, nothing to worry about. Yeah. Okay. Do some final uh, last minute checks to ensure everything They're actually very smooth, like but okay, They wet. are towing us out. Okay. So we're cool. Yeah. So we're just anchoring up to the tow uh, tractor. My car's like this in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly the computer kicked in and launch was back on. Earth Orbiter 1, proceed with takeoff on runway 9 on my mark. <laughs> Five, four, four, three, We've got three, from the two, tractor. one, We are going mark. for takeoff, all right? Okay. Go. Let's go. Let's do it. No way! Yes! Prepare for rocket ignition. <laughs> Alright, here we go. This is fucking amazing. This is amazing. This is fucking amazing. We are going so fast. We have rotation. Take it off. I think we're taking off now. On my mark. 16. 10, 9, 8, 8 7, 6, up in the air. 5, we're, we're long 4, there. 3, 2, 1, mark. <laughs> Solid rocket boosters have ignited. We have the Landing hydraulics retract. Check. <laughs> hydraulics retract. Capcom Grimsk to Earth Orbital 1, now entering square spiral ascent. Check. Capcom Grimsk to Earth Orbital 1, confirm a maximum dynamic pressure has been reached. Check. Maximum dynamic pressure has been reached. Over. True, and just can't even put it totally covered. We're starting our banking maneuvers! What did he say? How are you guys doing okay. back there? Huh? Doing good. Doing good. Oh, yeah, doing good, yeah. Dawson. Anybody feel a bit queasy or anything like that? Can't hear you. Good. Nearing the space. I'll say after a, after a shaky start, this is going pretty well. Earth Orbiter 1, 
Capcom groups. We are approaching and passing through really authentic. five zero 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 meters. I'm five zero to kilometers. Seventy thirty on Roger that. my belief. But I am uh, actually on the ground. I think I'm just gonna go with the flow. Not quite the feeling. Five minutes to go, nobody's asked me if we're there yet! Are we there yet? No! Are we lost? Nearly! Five minutes, five minutes for astronauts. For five minutes. Main shutdown um, on my mark. It's, uh, it's very smooth though. It's like we haven't even left the ground. That's how smooth it is. Five, it's really four, weird. Three, two, we go. one, Boost. mark. Capcom Crimps to Earth Orbiter 1. You may commence your on orbit operations. Congratulations, everybody. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Capcom. Thank you. All right, all tight. Thanks for the AGG. Do that. All right, folks. We're okay. going to come around and unhook you in just a second while we unhook ourselves. Billy. Please uh, do not leave uh, the seats. Okay. Stay okay. way off in a moment. Everyone all right? Yeah. Fantastic. I feel fucking amazing. Confirm. I am switching to... GPC Autopilot on my Charlie. mark, Charlie. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go up and switch to Autopilot confirmed. With orbit achieved, our actor pilots decided to do a little more covering up for those earlier teething problems. You don't want to unstrap, you Sorry? have to be just excited. Oh, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Feel good, you're getting... That's smoother than, like, taking... I've, I've had the worse flights. very far away, you see on the... Uh, 
regular jet, you have the engines very near. Yeah. But we have engines long. Yeah. If you were near the engines, it would blow our, our ears. Your, your ear. You ever, uh, you ever sit uh, at the back of the plane, then sit at the front of the plane? Yeah, it's different signs. Totally different, you know. Uh, in front of the engines, it's pretty quiet. Behind it, it's just noise, noise, noise. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're about 120 feet away from the engines right oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, that was loud, though. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks, thank guys. You. That's it. It's done. Everyone thought it couldn't be done, but tonight it's happened. We now have three people who believe they're in space. Now, we were going to uh, open the shutters so they could see our projection of planet Earth in front of them. Uh, but so far we haven't. You're probably thinking, why not? That's the money shot. Well, something no one could have foreseen. A moth is loose in the studio, and I think you'll agree, a five-foot moth projection suddenly covering most of the Sahara would probably give the game away. Will the moth blow the whole mission? Well, we hope not. But you can find out tomorrow on Space Cadets. Ten ho! Live for Space Cadets tonight from Midnight Channel 4. Now, when you're not in front of your TV, don't miss a minute of the mission. Go to the website channel4.com slash space cadets to watch right up to the minute streaming. Starting over on E4, the satellite show, given a minute. Next here, a singer who could be about to perform her swan song, Gone Without a Trace.